And good morning, broadcasting live from the Manor with Dr. JJ. It's an honor to be here today as we have welcome Gerald Martindale, who I got to work with and serve in ministry with for many years at Metropolitan, who is very gifted and has a world tour actually kind of scheduled for Europe right after this. So it's an honor to have you here, Gerald, this morning. He plays the carillon, if you're not familiar with the carillon. And so it's wonderful you climb up and these bells are sometimes two and three and four tons. Quite remarkable, quite remarkable. We begin with our acknowledgement of the territory. As we gather for worship, we honor and thank the huron Wendat Nation, the Métis Nation of Ontario, Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation, Mississaugas of Scugac Island First Nation, and Six Nations of the Grand River as our community partners and traditional inhabitants of the lands of the city of Toronto, the region of Hamilton, Durham region, and our surrounding areas. May we be connected to this, this stand in the heartbeat and the edge of the garden to bring the fruit of season of all connected to the heartbeat of the ancestors as one. Special welcome to those visiting with us today, and it's always a great moment to welcome people to Manor Road. And today we have Jennifer Palin who's selling her wonderful cards. Jennifer is a maker, and I, she said she's a crafter. I said, why she make things? And they're actually supporting our Syrian family that we're working towards. Uh, the one that's connected with Susan Johnson's friend, who has a wonderful salon, artistic hair lounge that's on Bayview. And there's a family of seven. So you remember, mom and dad and five children. Uh, it'll take a long time to make this happen, but one journey, long journey begins with the first steps. And that's what we do together. And let's just slide along the next step. And remember, we have yoga at the manor that's uh, created and crafted by Linda Nicholson, who's the sister of uh, Joanne Nicholson. And let's continue forward. Then. Great beginning news, celebrations of adoption for Nicholas Smith, child of Lydia Smith. Remember, let's say it's special, put our hands together. Yeah. And they're actually on the call, and uh, we're looking forward to a baptism sometime in August. So celebrations, uh, Lydia and Nicholas, and it took two years, and long journey. We all know what government red tape is all about, unfortunately. So we, and remember, back, backpacks for Thorncliffe are raising funds and also volunteer time. Just remind you, we're going to be creating 400 backpacks in partnership with the North Toronto Cluster Churches, and they're going to be assembled at Aileen St. George's, probably at the end of July, beginning of August, I'm looking for volunteers as well as donations. Do check in with Marianne, you can make a new transfer. And this just reminds you, you can make a donation to the Syrian Fund by through, uh, emailing directly to, uh, it's a special email created for the UCW at Manor Road or by check or by online for each e transfer. And we're looking, well, and there's a special event that'll be the first Monday. At those, well, Last Monday, September, at the Artistic Care Lounge. It'll be at I think, six or seven o'clock, and you'll hear more about that coming. And, and our wonderful Shelly Neal, who's a good friend of mine, my heart teacher, in the spare time I do harp, just in case that, well, there isn't enough hours today. And she is going to bring her wonderful harp and, uh, and uh, beautiful music. And uh, we're going to have a people are going to mention in prayer the friend of Liz and Christy Smith, Liz Smith and Christy Orfield, Scotty uh, Lyle. He passed away when we, uh, as we light our candle, honoring his memory. He, he passed, passed away yesterday. Okay. And again, volunteers needed uh, August 8th. And then just reminding everyone that our pantry 
we have just outside of the door created by our wonderful fan, Joe John Gasper. Again, food donations as well as other donations can help remind people that they're never alone in our community here at Manor Road. And before we plunge into the call to worship, just reminding everybody the garden is doing quite well. And there's a zucchini that's this long. So it's a good idea to pick that zucchini that's this long or become this long. And they're much better when they don't become woody. So if you're feeling the need for a zucchini salad tonight, I highly recommend, or you know someone, take it home today. And also there's basil and sage and just pick away and, and it'll be a good thing, yes. And we begin with our call to worship. God is good and loving to the faithful. Give thanks and praise for all that God has done for us. God is good. Praise the Lord. Sometimes it's a bit more precious. Let us pray. God be with you. And also with you. Grant us this day, O oh God, not to be overtaken by anxious thoughts that can make us feel that you are not near. Give us the chance to sit at your feet, to enjoy every note, word, every musical note, that we may feel your real presence and in turn live out that presence in our families, our communities, our jobs. School. Prepare us as we journey as your people to worship and to obey. And now we call on James will be at home and me who's here. One second, we'll highlight James. Okay. Can we highlight James too? Good. Let's highlight James. One second and spotlight. There we go. Okay. All right. Let there be light. You say, let there be light. Thank you, James. Remember today, as we, I mentioned, there's Scotty Lyle, a good friend of Liz Smith and Christine Warfield. And may the angels of light listen for us this day. May the sparks of God's beauty dance in the eve, eyes of those we love. And may the universe be on fire with presence for us this day. May the new sun's rise and grace us with gratitude. Let the earth gleam and shine, and its waters breathe there. Let the heavens wind stir the soil of our soul, and fresh awakenings rise within us. Amen. We get distracted in our routines, so busy with our daily chores that we forget to take the time to stop and breathe to look up and to notice the creation you've given and the way it speaks about your love and passion for your people. We do not take time to listen for your words or reading the Bible or listening to music or talking to friends and we become worried and upset about many things. Sometimes, oh God, we behave like the earth. We devote our time to looking up and thinking that everything we are commanded to do is to love God and we forget to serve our neighbor and to commit our time to the concrete work of the church, forgetting to get our hands dirty. God, balance, help us. 
Forgive us when we do not know when to be workers and when to be hearers. In your mercy, heal our worries and our judgments so that we can indeed keep the best part. In the name of our loving master. Before, because of your evil thoughts and actions, you were strangers and enemies of God. Now you have been reconciled to God by the death and the resurrection of Christ. Now you and I can live in peace, restored by the blood shed on the cross. Live thankfully. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I you to extend the peace of Christ. Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace. say encountering the child within because we are all children at heart and as I remember reminded by my good friend never lose our curiosity always be curious about many things now would you do this camping on a rope across a chasm not in a million there's, there's something about what do you do when you roll over and a lot of other things that are very important biofunctions and everything else cooking eating what if you you get you you want to go home? Well, what, you gotta crawl. It's good for Spider Man or Spider Woman, but that's what. It, but it's, apparently, this is a thing for people. And the other thing I find is interesting is people who uh, they do this kind of camping on the side of a cliff. Again, I've camped in many different spots. I've camped in Florida, where the grasshoppers were about the size of very large hot dogs. I've camped in Northern Ontario. I have camped at the Grade Ten camping trip that we, there was a week for a week long. There was about 150 of us who went up to Halliburton. There was no bottom on the tents. We had to cook our own meals. It was another era where they didn't worry about all the things and permission, there was permission of course, but parents trusted the teachers and, and we cooked on open fires. We had never done this in, ever before in our entire lives. And there was a lot of drinking of pancakes because we couldn't get the fire going and drinking of grapefruit juice, which I couldn't stand, but we had a good time. But there's something about the outdoors is to not maybe camping. The new word is glamping, where you have an inflatable mattress and it's raised up. And I remember actually being in Muskoka and they delivered a canoe to your campsite and they delivered firewood to your campsite. And there was a washer dryer right beside the campsite. That's a bit more, you know, potable. That's just the experience. Let's just slide along the next one. And then part of summer, of course, is fishing. Now, this young lad whose name I believe was Jason, uh, how his name is. I got to baptize him a couple of years back and I celebrated his mom and dad's wedding many years ago. And what was interesting, he's from a family that has deep roots in the city of Toronto. One side is from the Bryce family. The other side is from the Gooderham family. Yes, Gooderham and Warts, Toronto's whiskey magnets, if you recall. When many years ago in the 1800s, when whiskey was, was be just beginning and 
The starter homes were something you would see across from the Keg Mansion. The starter homes that's larger than Manor Road United. And the other family home that's at the corner of George Street Subway and Bloor. That's about 10 times the size of Manor Road. It's a different era. It's amazing how much money you could make in whiskey. It was quite, quite lucrative, especially during the Depression or the prohibitionists, so to speak. But again, fishing in the summertime, very important. And let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of today, the wonder of people. And especially when we look for the ways we see scripture, the prayer of illumination, open our hearts and our minds so that we can understand the fullness of your word. Amen. And fill us with the light of the Holy Spirit and bless the servant who has chosen to share the word proclaimed today and the word will be Amen. Get to your first and grant. First reading is from Amos 8, uh, verses 1 to 12. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people, Israel. I will never again pass by them. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The deep bodies, the dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent, hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor of the land. Say, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale. We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver, and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again, like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon, and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only sun and the end of it like a bitter day. And the time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, or a thirst for water, but hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to south, and they shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. And then over to Phoenix. So I'll turn mine down, turn on the other. From uh, Colossians, the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 28 is uh, our second reading. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created. Things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him 
all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once strange <clears throat> and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. He has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death as to present you holy and blameless and irre irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, I, Paul became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh. I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Thank you. So, now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. And she had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. And there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Hear the word told to us through the ages. something about this time of year with all the wondrous growing and discovering let us pray god we look to you in the corners and the hidden bushes we find something growing a new spirit a new spark of wisdom a new delight may we be the curious to discover the hidden corners in your gift of all creation amen I just recorded it. Okay. There's something about what we call us, all of us being what we call this summer fruit. And I ask, you may ask, what is that? What do you mean by that? And I ask that because many years ago, I remember it was the first experience of camping. And there we were, we woke up one morning, we were in the forests with friends. And right beside our campsite, there were wild blueberries growing. And I had never seen wild blueberries growing. I'd seen blueberries in the grocery store. And because we had wild blueberries growing right beside us, we had blueberry pancakes. I thought, it's as easy as that. And when you think of our vast country, beyond the orchards of St. Catharines and the fruit belts, where we may have picked cherries or we may have picked raspberries, 
There's something more interesting even beyond that. The wild strawberries of Northern Ontario, the wild raspberries, again, the wild blueberries. If you're on Manitoulin Island, the hawberries. If you're not a local, you're a wannabe haw eater. And then if you travel east to Newfoundland, you run into uh, baked apples, which are comparable to cloudberries found in Norway, or laca berries, or there's squash berries, there's partridge berries, there's a Saskatoons if you're from Saskatchewan, but they also grow in Northern Ontario. This is the wonderful abundance of summer, not to mention the wild leeks and the fiddleheads with butter and the other nuts. Be careful of the mushrooms because some may have a, a benefit you never imagined possible, but be careful always at every time, and every place, what you eat in the wild. Always have a guide with you. But it's about that wonder, isn't it, that we are a summer fruit. It's as if we have almost like a jazz musician playing different instruments and helping discover the saxophone and the drums as we discover the wonders of summer. When I say the words, see the basket, I'm here in the text of summer fruit. It's about looking inside and seeing what's there, the gooseberries, the cranberries, the red currants. I told this story before, I'll, I'll tell it again, many uh, years ago. I had I, I love red currants, and I thought uh, for a, a supper at my house at that time at Highway Nine Airport Road, I'd make a red currant pie. But I had so many pies with so much sugar, I held back in the sugar, and I served the red currant pie with no sugar. And people looked at me and said, "What were you thinking? If you've ever tried red currants, you need." lots and lots and lots of sugar. They're more tart than aspirin on a good day. We learn, do we? We learn, we try things and then take it from there. But there's something about the basket of fruit is it's the gift of God's creation. But as we hear the Lord showed me and reveal something when we see not only the berries, but as I was visiting a friend in their, their patio on Homewood, this wonderful first floor of the condominium and all the bushes that have grown around. We saw cardinals, we saw blue jays. It's about noticing what is living all around us in the here and the now. This, this week I saw a coyote going across the lower part of the Riverdale field and it was early morning and they were going into the Riverdale farm. Well, guess what's in the Riverdale farm? There's chickens, there's ducks, there's frogs. For the coyote, it's a mandarin buffet. What will I eat today? Oh my, I'm not sure. I'm sure the animals are saying, watch out, the coyote's coming, be careful. It's all alive, all around us. Every moment, we just need to look and discover. As we hear in the Colossians read by Fina, the image of the invisible God and don't we, we ask sometimes, what does that mean for us in the here and now? Where do we go from here? But it's about God being inside each and every person. Not only in the trees, but the wind, the birds of the air, in the most unusual places. To capture that memory, to hear a song as if for the first time. To know that in the moment of time, we're not alone. It's about hearing Mary listening. To be present to God. And Martha saying, don't you care? Don't you care? How many of us have heard the news of a family member or a friend or a person living with cancer or having a horrendous accident happen to them? And we say, don't you care in the here and now? Don't you care? It's about balance and discovering again, about knowing and that a strange relationship that happens so would be prepared to witness the wonder of the sunrise breaking into our lives in the here and the now, because we are the summer fruit. To see the basket for the first time, just to know that God shows us through each and every one of our eyes, to be witness to the invisible God, to listen to Mary, and hear again the welcoming of Martha, to choose the better part, which is both listening and serving each other. So often we will be at a task and we probably of us all have a story to tell and we have people that are uh, slackers. That's a, I remember that term when I was working at, at Dominion many years ago. 
But the reality is there are people like that, but there's also the reality that people are much more hard workers and ready to row extra harder. And sometimes that's the people you want on your team and you sort of just gently uh, acknowledge that yes, there are people who work less harder, but yes, there are also people who work harder. But what Mary and Martha, listening and learning today in the here and now, about God breaking in and preparing us for the sunset that may come, about us understanding and seeing the basket all around us. There was a, a singer who gave a, a wonderful interview on the CBC and COVID has been challenging for her, as many for many of us. She would book a venue and they would close it. She would book another venue and close it. She came up with a brilliant idea. What about doing concerts at dog parks? Guess what? They don't close dog parks. I don't know about you, but there's no dog that's going to say, I'm okay. I can hold on for a month. It's not, not going to happen. I speak as a dog owner. And I know some people have dogs or cats. Cat owners have a different thing. They have a cat litter box. And some people have little, little pads they have out. You know, we take our dog out, rain or shine. And, but imagine that she went on a cross country tour and did set up her guitar and her amplifier and played music for people. That, I call that being resourceful. Because you know the dog parks don't close. They're always there. They're always open, open for business. And where all you have to do is look around and discover. But it reminds us that people in the most unusual moments find a way forward. It's about knowing that the summer fruit is here and now, in that moment of reconciliation. It's about us seeing as if for the first time that moment of Lord is my light about it. We hear Jesus entering the village, the incarnation moment of flesh and life discovering for all of us in the here and the now, because we are the summer fruit that's exploding and being discovered in the moment of the corners of our lives. We are that moment of the basket, the moment of showing and seeing God in the most hidden places, the moment of listening, welcoming, and integrated, left, and right, and night, nice, and day. This past week, we saw Harry Potter at the, now called the CA Theater, Mervish Theater, because they changed the name one more time. In Toronto, you, have, you need a roadmap with, with, a visit, with, with a pencil, because it keeps changing, as you know, with, as something's a new theater or a new name. It was delightful, it was wonderful. The magic, we're seeing it again with our a group of people from Manor Road, discover the wonders of what has been a story for many ages. And I share with you, I thought my Harry Potter story. Many years ago, Dufferin Presbytery, Dufferin Peel Presbytery, we gathered with a hundred youth at Five Oaks Camp in Pia Paris, Ontario. There we were. And one of the youth who was 12 years old was in the cabin. I thought, well, why are they in the cabin? It's bright and sunny day. And I said, what are you doing here, young Aaron? trying to be friendly and engaging. I'm reading Harry Potter. I said, what's that? Well, it's about a school for children, young men and women who are learning to be witches and witches and whatnot, and wizards. And I said, really? I was riveted. I said, well, let's hear more about Harry Potter. And we listened, I listened to Aaron, his book and story we read together. And I talked him into coming outside and joining the rest of the group. And Aaron was part of that era. Remember in the 90s, everyone was gifted. Some were gifted and some were not. And, and I had, one thing I taught Aaron was this, and this is because of Harry Potter. I said, Aaron, this is a gifted broom. It's amazing. It works really well when you do this. Aaron, this is a gifted dishcloth. And you can see when you wipe, it cleans the dishes. And that's wonderful. And Aaron, this is a gifted egg flipper. I, you know where I was going with this. I was helping him understand that everyone needs to pitch in and be part of the team. And as much as we went through an era where there were gifted and non-gifted people, we have to remember all people come to humanity with gifts that are so powerful and so wonderful and so different and so unique and something to celebrate in the here and now. Because we are the summer fruit in that basket. For the summer fruit to show and see God breaking into our day. For the summer fruit to listen and know that Christ is with us. To be the welcoming, to choose the better part. To be the living compassion in the here and now. To see the basket of summer fruit in front of us. This Tuesday, here at Manor Road, my niece is getting married. 
Thank you, God. Yes, it's going to be quite lovely. But when you are a family member of the bride, you're also the pit crew. How many people have been part of the pit crew of wedding? Put your hand up. Well, there's been a few. Studio. It means you help out. You schlep, which is a wonderful Yiddish German expression. You carry things and make it happen. It was Manuel and I last Thursday. We, we, there's a couple of thousand plates. We cleaned them on Thursday morning in a dishwasher at Manuel. They're in the kitchen. That's my testimony. But it means you help to make it happen. That is what community does. Not so much about waiting on the sidelines to watch and see how it outcome, but to make a difference in the here and now. The summer fruit is here. The basket is in front of us. And we are that summer fruit to know and risk again. As Hildegard brought bring it, in the darkest night, we find the gift of God breaking in. And in the readings of Daniel, one of my new favorite passages I found a couple of years ago. This is it. There's a tree that stretches from earth to heaven. And it produces fruit in the 12 months of the year. Everyone is fed by this tree. All the birds nest in its branches. And better still, and better yet, all creatures find shade and home under the branches. In Daniel and the book of Revelation, fruit for the hungry, home for the homeless. It's thy kingdom come in the here and now. All of us, gift of God today. For the great diversity you have created. Creator, we come to you with both the joys and the sorrows of our hearts. We are grateful for the gift of life and the joy that it can bring, for families and friends who love us, for allies who stick up for us even when we cannot risk sticking up for ourselves. For the great diversity you have created in our world, we pray for those who suffer from discrimination because of their gender identity or sexual orientation, or their skin color, who worry about their employment, or who cannot find a job, for those who must hide who they are to find housing, for those who are not safe on our streets, for those who do not feel safe in their place of worship. Help us to end homophobia, transphobia, biphobia, and all forms of discrimination and hate. Show us the way to make this world a better place for all. And Don's going to come around and invite you to join in the offering.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord God. God, we give today in thankfulness and with assurance that anything we give will contribute to the continuing growth of your kingdom in the world. Give us wisdom as a church so this offering is used for the sharing of your word and the service of your people. In the name of the one that gave us everything we are and have. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go before us, and the glory of God will be our victory. to sing have turned into cries of abuse and oppression and prejudice. We have abused the planet that you have provided for us to inhabit and to share with other creatures. We have wasted the water, abused other resources, limited access to food and marked borders of inhospitality. We pray for this world in need of restoration and ask that you provide us with the tools and the intelligence needed to rebuild the world you created for us. God, save us, heal us, and make us well. There is oppression in the world that we live in. We see it in the ways human beings treat one another, taking advantage of those considered to be of less value. We turn our eyes away from me. We see the needy being trampled or the poor being stashed out of sight. May your will be the last word and the church an effective witness Sovereign Lord in our midst. God save us, save us, save us. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Our righteousness will go forth. Glory of God. prejudice in our relationships, Lord. We judge one another, not with justice and fairness, but with fear and misinformation. It's easier to demonize than to take the time to listen and to establish relationships. It's easier to assume than to ask questions and to acquire knowledge. Make us agents of peace and restore our songs of love for you and for one another. Oh, save us. Yes. As a mother nurtures her children, let us pray. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as this in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Today, as we go, we have the opportunity to share some of the summer fruit, blackberries and cherries and blueberries and raspberries and white grapes and strawberries, all are ready to celebrate the wonder of summer here at Manor Road, to savor the gift of what we look forward to in this time, the warm days, but be that gentle spirit, both listening and active, and when we hear the words, don't you care, we say, yes, I'm here to stand beside you right now. In the name of God, Christ and Spirit, amen. Raise a son of gladness, peoples of the earth. Christ has come bringing peace, joy to every heart. Alleluia, alleluia, joy to every heart. Alleluia, alleluia, joy to every heart. Well, thank you, everybody. Remember everybody online to turn on your camera.